Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So whether you know it or not, you've probably already interacted with self-driving AI, even if you don't have a Tesla. Basically, even if you're just driving on the road, you've probably incidentally merged into or had to evade an autonomous vehicle trying to do something to learn that you actually just thought was a driver who was just getting their permit. So also, if you have a Tesla, and even if you haven't paid for FSD or one of the beta FSDs, the cameras on your car are always collecting video and being sent back to Tesla to actually train their self-driving models. We used to think that just a few years ago when Cruise and Zooks were actually starting to really jump into the issue of self-driving, Uber and Waymo were also early pioneers here. They started to realize that it was actually easier to collect more training data if you just took video of what a car was doing instead of using expensive LiDAR. The other benefit here is that it's actually cheaper and easier to install cameras on cars than LiDAR. So up until recently, Tesla certainly had the lead here. They have the most electric cars deployed in the US. They all have cameras on them and they're always constantly collecting video from parking lots, highways, and thousands of interactions that drivers encounter every day. And this data has actually started to get so valuable that Uber has actually started installing stereoscopic cameras in all of their Uber drivers vehicles, regardless of what kind of vehicle it is. However, if we really think about it, do you actually have to use cameras to capture this? Like if you capture enough of this video, can you actually start to think about using generative AI or LLMs to just generate this footage and create really difficult edge case scenarios that actually present the most problems. That's what we're gonna to discuss today. And real quick, if you like our content, it would really help us out if you like, subscribe, and share. And let's get into it. So if you've been on YouTube or Twitter, you've probably noticed there are lots of people who will just post videos of them sitting in their Tesla driving around with the latest FSD and highlighting important or dangerous edge cases. Now, although some people might think this is actually kind of reckless, generally speaking, this is how this technology gets better. And in most cases, in, or really in all cases I've seen on Twitter, humans are able to intervene before anything bad happens. Now, we can't say that in the case of Cruise, but uh, we'll cover that in another very important video, but keep an eye out for that coming soon. The company I wanna talk about today is a company called Wave AI, and they've been working on a model called Gaia for about the last year. And basically what this is, is this is a 9 billion parameter, what they're calling world model, trained on about 4,700 hours of driving data from the UK. And the idea here is that this model is able to simulate complex and diverse driving scenes from video, text, and action inputs. The model is 480 times larger than the preview that they shared earlier this year. And the results are really pretty incredible. And the idea here, again, is that you, know, you capture a certain amount of training data in the form of actual video that's from a specific area, right? Because if you look at this, it's all clearly from the UK. And then you can turn around and you can produce nearly infinite scenarios based on weather, time of day, season, traffic level, and then feed that back into a model and end up with better output. Specifically, bigger improvements in less time, which is really what the AI race at this point is all about. And you might ask, you know, well, I thought that training models with synthetic data didn't work or that wasn't a thing. And actually it's getting more and more common as LLMs that are more diverse in their inputs and outputs and capabilities are developed. People are finding that in certain cases, especially in niche applications like coding, there are actually lots of ways where if you feed synthetic data to an AI that you can actually achieve better performance than using real life human feedback or our LHF. And in some cases by using synthetic data, you can actually prevent drift or a lot of the negative side effects that actually come with using human data. Because the issue is you actually have to be able to classify how good something is before you point it at your model and tell it what to do. And for companies like OpenAI, and a lot of other early AI companies, the biggest challenge was actually just getting enough humans to label and classify data before training on it than actually building a lot of these models themselves. So why is Gaia different than a lot of existing models? What is its capability and how, what actually differentiates this model from other text to video or video to video generative AI? So what's cool here, I mean, we've seen video to video AI before. Um, Zeroscope was one of the first models that did this. And what's cool with Gaia is what I would call the video context length. So this model is actually capable of creating very diverse and complex scenarios. So you can give it a text prompt like a, a four lane intersection at night with light foliage. And then it could produce hours of content that is this exact scenario or complex driving situations that compound leading up to this scenario. And what's interesting is in a lot of video models right now, they can really only generate about 60 seconds of video at a time at most. And to get more than that, you actually have to batch them together. Now, we're not exactly sure if this is what's going on with Gaia 1, but what we do know is however they're doing it, 
they're able to maintain context and a linear consistency of actions in a way that we haven't seen before, and they're doing it really, really well. But really, there's more than just generating videos. Uh, Gaia is an entire world model. It's a world model that allows Gaia to simulate the future conditioned on video, text, and action inputs, which can be leveraged for making informed decisions when driving. So what's interesting is the decision matrix that Gaia is using is actually keyed into dis similar decision matrices that are actually used in self-driving architectures. And what's curious is there are real questions here because eventually you know, there would be a question as to whether data collected by Zooks or Tesla could actually be used to train any other kind of AI. Generally speaking, it's only really valuable in terms of how it's labeled relative to what you're training against. Interestingly enough, one of the business models of Wave is that Gaia can actually be used in a general fashion and licensed. So if anyone wanted to make a model, they could use this data and not actually have it cause issues. So why is this actually game changing for autonomous driving? So the first one is safety. Uh, one limitation with AI systems like today's large language models is that they're autoregressive, next world prediction algorithms, but aren't necessarily aware of the implications of their decisions. A world model allows us to give the AI the capability to be aware of its decisions by simulating the future, which is important for self-driving safety. And basically this just means being able to understand what the next potential set of actions may be. And the last time we covered something similar to this was um, the AI that was actually developed to play Minecraft and how it could actually understand its next action through decision trees. The next and really one of the most important is synthetic training data. So at Waze, they believe that synthetic training data is generally just the future for AI in total uh, because it's safer, cheaper, and infinitely scalable. Gaia One unlocks unprecedented levels of realism and diversity of synthetic data for self-driving. And diversity really is the key here because if you're not able to really tweak camera inputs and aberrations and situations that actual vehicles might encounter, then the benefit of synthetic data really isn't there. And the last one I want to cover is what Waze refers to as long tail robustness. So one of the biggest challenges for self-driving is this long tail robustness problem or dealing with the enormous magnitude of edge cases that are seen on the road. An advantage of generative AI is its incredible ability to recombine experiences in new ways. So basically you can take uh, existing um, edge cases or existing uh, synthetic edge cases and turn them into new things. The key also is you could compile, say, all of like the angry people posting um, failure videos on Twitter of your system and then actually use that to train explicitly. Right now, Tesla does this by understanding when a driver actually has to stop and intervene for FSD. And those are immediately flagged and ranked much higher than just normal driving content. This is exciting for self-driving as it means we can learn from two edge case scenarios and combine them to become a new corner case, not just from existing corner cases. For example, you could experience a driving in fog and experience a jaywalker um, crossing in this fog. And Gaia could actually learn from these experiences to understand and generate a new fog plus jaywalking scenario. And some of the best examples of this are cars pulling out into traffic. And I think one of the coolest features of all this is that like Blotter Stream, this model seems to be able to just create infinitely long videos. The founder of Waze has actually posted certain videos that are actually hours long and are and have almost zero perceptive lapses in visual um, acuity. Sometimes trees will get a little weird. And one thing that I also think is cool is how this model is actually almost an accident really good at simulating lens flare and shading. Previously, especially when SLAM models were really common for self-driving, a lot of the simulation that would go on would be done in game engines. And people thought that the idea of making things as realistic as possible would actually make the most sense and drive the most value. So understanding like exactly how the sun would come through the trees or exactly how headlights would come around a corner. But it turns out that you know having the best cameras and giving infinite amounts of data to a self-driving model that uses visual input from cameras as input to make decisions isn't actually always the best thing, um, which is why even though this footage looks muddy, it almost is better to train a model on muddy inputs that it really has to think carefully about. Also to avoid weird um, edge cases or sort of a deceptive cases where an AI model will actually learn on the wrong details of an image. But uh, it's why when you blur images and deliberately obscure kind of weird um, details, you can actually end up with a much more general and capable model in the end. On this channel, I really want to start covering more of the self-driving content. I think what's going on with uh, Tesla 
Tesla and Kama AI is really interesting. And with Gaia, it's really cool to see other massive players in the field that are trying to do new things and specifically doing new things that maybe Tesla hasn't done quite yet. But I'm sure internally at Tesla, something like this is going on right now. So what do you guys think? Uh, do you have a Tesla? Do you have a Kama 3? Would you trust a AI that drove your car that was trained purely on synthetic data that wasn't actually predominantly trained with real images of roads? Tell me what you think in the comments. And as always, if you like our video and our content, please like and subscribe and share. It really helps us out. And we hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.